What's going on guys? Another day in the music business, Music Biz Daily. My name is Matei and let's get into another story. So I want to kind of stay on the topic of technology, tech, apps, and the music industry and all that. And today I want to talk about an app that's kind of, I guess, going to be make it, making its way to the U.S. And it's very interesting because I've been looking at different apps to see how they're all going to kind of approach this model. But I guess uh, a label in South Korea has figured it out. So the app that I'm talking about um, is called uh, Weverse, and it's an app that a label called Big Hit, which is a South Korean based label, has created as its own ecosystem for its big artists, right? So basically what happened is like, let me paint the picture for you a little bit better. Imagine a label um, create, you know, has a few artists they're managing and they become huge. And now um, there's a lot of fans that accumulate around these three artists that this one particular label created. So what the label does next is creates an app that creates an ecosystem for all those millions of fans to interact with those three huge artists, right? And they provide exclusive content, they provide membership, uh, subscription-based model for content behind the scenes or things that normally you wouldn't get access to. They provide an app to be able to provide online uh, concerts and things like that. So that's essentially what Vivers has done and it caught the eye and the ear of uh, Universal Music Group, essentially the largest label on this planet. So what has happened during the pandemic for Big Hit as the label that owns this app, Weverse, is that the revenue went up to 300, I mean, $437 million in revenue. One of the things that was responsible for that was its ability to launch these live um, online concerts. The last one that they did uh, ranked in $20 million in ticket sales. Just basically 756,000 people, fans, just being glued to an app watching like a live concert for major artists, right? So of course, Universe is like, you know, we kind of like that. Now, the reason I'm making this video is because I want to kind of tell you why this approach can sort of work, but other examples that didn't really work. Like you have, as an example, uh, Jay-Z with Tidal, which in my opinion is sort of like a failed venture for him. Yes, it made him money because he ended up selling uh, the app or stake in that app to uh, Sprint, which was a partnership that they created for 200 million. So in terms of his initial investment, he definitely made money on that. But in terms of their goal to saturate the US music market as a streaming app did not go so well. And what they've done, they you know got certain artists to sort of produce exclusive content for Tidal in the beginning stages of Tidal's you know, launch. Uh, thinking that those millions of fans would flock to Tidal and use that over Spotify and Apple Music. Now, what hasn't happened is just that millions of fans did not flock to Tidal and use it as an exclusive platform, despite you know Tidal's different efforts of creating like the the hi-fi, the high quality version of the subscription for twenty dollars to all the audio heads, which I used to be subscribed to that twenty dollar version because it had uncompressed audio, basically flag files, you know, which sound definitely better than an MP3 stream through Spotify or Apple Music. But anyways, Tidal didn't take off. You know, you had different examples of major artists um, like Taylor Swift boycotting Spotify and these other platforms where all the consumers flock to and she sort of gave up. She ended up going back to Spotify. Now, the reason artists, even Jay-Z put, you know, at first up until his 50th birthday, like months ago, all of his content was only on Tidal. Now it's available everywhere because you realize that he wants his content to be consumed by millions of people. And where do the millions of consumers flock to? It's Spotify, it's Apple Music, it's Amazon Music, and whatever else. So what this label has figured out with the Vivers is that even though they created these like three megastar uh, artists essentially under their label, they were able to convince their fans to go to their own native ecosystem app Vivers that they created. So now they have millions of subscribers or millions of users of this particular app engaging with their artists. Now, their fans, the fans of those artists could have continued to use Spotify or YouTube or whatever else was available, but they were convinced enough to go to this app and they made it work. So now, of course, Universal and Warner Brothers and all these different labels are closely looking at that because what if Universal created their own app and in order to, you know, interact with your favorite artists that are underneath the Universal umbrella, you would have to go to that app to get this extra, um, you know, 
sort of content, exclusive content, subscription-based content, other you know pieces of material that otherwise you wouldn't get. But instead, Universal, you know, once you get to a size of Universal, you want to acquire uh, companies or you know create a partnership. So Universal, I wouldn't be surprised if they wanted to acquire both Big Hit as the label and Weverse as the app, which is owned by the label. So I'm gonna be watching this closely and see what happens because there's a ton of apps that try this. But at the end of the day, I will tell you that the market always wins, which means the consumer demand will always dictate where the artist is sort of gonna be at, for the most part. Every once in a while, if the artist is big enough, like if Drake, Taylor Swift, and maybe Beyonce, and Ed Sheeran, and Ariana Grande, and Adele, all six got together and say, if all you fans wanna consume our content, you can't get it nowhere else, except on this app we're about to create, I think they have enough pull with millions of people around the globe that they could convince that shift. Otherwise, it's very difficult to move millions of consumers from one platform to another just because of a few artists. Now, Weavers has figured out in South Korea, which is a different music market, the behavior of those consumers is slightly different than the US-based consumers, so we'll see what Universal is gonna be doing if they partner up or if they try to basically pay the, the app developers of Weverse to develop something similar for Universal. But it's an interesting story to me because I've seen countless apps fail in this market to try to become the new platform where the artists are gonna be able to make more money on and you know provide exclusive content and all of that, you know, similar to Patreon. It's just very difficult to do that. You have to have the adoption of all the consumers not just the major artists, the consumers have to adopt that app, make it cool, choose that app to go to as their go-to place to consume this content, and that's how you can become successful. So I'm gonna you know, keep watching the story and update you guys on it, but um, just wanted to make it to give you an idea of how these major market shifts sort of happen in the industry and what, in my opinion, is necessary to be able to create an app that's gonna be the next thing where us, the consumers, are gonna consume music on. So I'm gonna leave you with that. See you guys in the next video. Peace.